Farage did an interview yesterday in which he was being, well, racist and slightly mad. And he said that most people uh, who do not share British values uh, were let into Britain by Rishi Sunak. This is not really true. Rishi wasn't standing there as some sort of uh, Charon-like doorkeeper guarding the river Styx. Rishi Sunak may not have been able to stop the boats, despite all the rhetoric and despite Rwanda, lots of R's there, but he wasn't inviting people in and he wasn't really letting people in. He was just failing to stop them. And he was, uh, I, I think the real problem with Rishi Sunak and the boats is that he was putting people in danger and not recognising the British responsibility to process asylum claims, no matter how spurious, no matter how wrong. Farage has been accused of Islamophobia, hatred, division. Um, he talks about people in the UK now, he's talking specifically about Muslims who loathe much of what we stand for. Well, he then goes on to say, I'm afraid uh, I've heard some recent surveys, yes, that's all very vague, that say that 46% of British Muslims support Hamas, support a terrorist organisation that is prescribed in this country. Well, again, his rhetoric there is very significant, but uh, what, what is the issue that he's driving at? Uh, is this 46% of people who support a terrorist organisation or support an organisation that Britain prescribes? Is it about the control of Britain or is it about the idea of rejecting uh, terrorism? It, it can be both, but the way he's voiced this issue, it's confusing. Because I think the whole point about a free society is that we're open to challenge the um, edicts and the regulations which are put out by a government. That is why a government exists, so these regulations and edicts can be changed if they are considered to be wrong. In this particular case, I think it is absolutely right to reject terrorism. And... Uh, and absolutely right to condemn the October the 7th terrorist attack by Hamas. The problems occur, or the problems might occur, should Hamas reject the bomb and embrace the ballot box. Then I think Hamas does what people in the, uh, in, in, in the Irish conflict did, and the Hamas leaders then become reputable uh, members of the political class in much the same way as the early leaders of Israel who were connected to terrorism, rejected the bomb and became leaders of the political class. So it's really difficult when all of these issues are telescoped by Farage into one uh, soundbite which is ill-conceived. Daisy Cooper for the Lib Dems has said that this that his comments were a grubby attempt um, to uh, a, a desperate attempt for attention, and that uh, that this is a man who lost out on the ballot uh, the ballot box seven times. Absolutely, but this is also a man who has defined the direction of the UK for the last decade, uh, although he's a failure. When it comes to elections, he is a, a an extraordinary voice in the political landscape of our country. For the Muslim Council, Zara um, Hamid has said that this was a horribly Islamophobic and hate-filled piece of misinformation. Absolutely. Farage ends his conversation with Trevor Phillips by saying that we must have shared history, shared culture and shared religion. Well, even there, he shows how his rhetoric falls short of reality. And if we go back just to the 19th century, this idea of shared religion, well, even when one could presume that the majority of people in the UK shared some form of Christianity, 
the rise of the Oxford movement led to serious hostility, um, like, for example, the imprisonment of Arthur Tooth. Arthur Tooth, Arthur Tooth was this wonderful man who was uh, determined to reintroduce the principles of the lost uh, traditions of the church, which were lost during the Reformation, and to, and to revive the Christian aesthetic in the Oxford movement. This is led by Pusey and by John Henry Newman, who converted to Catholicism, uh, one of two uh, saints who we have produced in Britain in the last 50 years. The second one has yet to be canonized, but uh, he's well on the way. I, I, I did a video about him earlier, Carlos. And uh, I, I, I think Arthur Tooth is a very interesting character. He was depicted in one of the spy cartoons for Vanity Fair behind bars, and the bars uh, are designed to look very ecclesiastical, but he was nevertheless imprisoned for his faith in the 19th century. And we have a, we, we, we don't have a single religion in Britain. This is not a theocracy. This is an absurd statement by a man who is too good to come out with nonsensical slogans simply to grab attention. And I, I would I would love to talk to Farage again, but I frankly he is being a a, a pillock, a twit, and um, a nasty divisive influence with this sort of language. But it's not new. He is somebody who is perfectly capable of charm and perfectly capable of good intellectual rigor. But in this instance, he's showing us the other side of his character, which is drawn from the tradition of nasty beer-swilling drunks, who are better advised to go back into the pub, finish their pint, and hide their head under the pillow for the next day. Mr. Farage would be better being quiet than repeating these divisive and incendiary and ill-informed slogans uh, from, uh, I, I have no idea where he got this rubbish from, but I don't believe it is his because I don't, because this is a man who has an interest in history and particularly an interest in the 19th century. And I cannot believe that he could come out with such absurdity unless it had been written by some twit. And that twit would be better to get his head out of um, his pint or to put his head in the pint and be quiet and, and just be done with it. Real politics is not done by drunks.